Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a really simple yet effective single page website for any business or any other purpose that you can think of with absolutely no coding needed. So together, we're gonna to cover every single step in the process from start to finish. So by the end of this video, you're gonna have a beautifully designed one page website like any of these or any combination of any of these really that you'll create simply by choosing a base layout, customizing it with your own elements, content, images, text, colors, fonts, all that good stuff. And then you can make it even more custom if you want by just dragging and dropping any element you want to include or by adding in any whole section that your content needs, choosing from hundreds of pro-designed, fully customizable layout blocks. It's even gonna have this cool top navigation bar that lets people scroll right down to a specific section on your page. And then with just a few extra clicks, we'll make sure that it looks perfect on all your mobile devices too. So I've personally created hundreds of websites like these using this exact method. It couldn't be any easier, and the possibilities are truly limitless here. I think you're honestly gonna forget uh, that you ever needed a web designer or a developer to do this kind of thing for you. And if you ever wanna skip to a specific step in the process, I do have chapter markers below this video um, in the description that you can click around, skip ahead, or go back to. So if you're ready, we're gonna start from the very beginning by getting you set up with a free domain name, something like yourbusiness.com, for example, as well as a huge discount on the easiest, most reliable, and cheapest web hosting plan that I personally always use and recommend as well. And if you don't know what web hosting is, it's just the word for the digital storage for all your website files, like your web pages, your images, all that stuff actually has to be stored on a reliable computer somewhere. So to get that, you just wanna to go to westmcdowell.com slash hosting to get my affiliate discount pricing on web hosting along with that free domain name. So just go to westmcdowell.com slash hosting and we can get started right now. Okay, so when you follow that link, westmcdowell.com slash hosting, you're gonna end up right here. So as you can see, you've got quite a discount, $2.95 as opposed to $8.99 a month. And you've got all kinds of great stuff with Bluehost. You've got uh, expert 24 seven support. I hardly need them, but when I do, they're right there. And it's just a really easy way to get your WordPress set up. And you do get that free domain name if you need it. So I'm just gonna click on get started. We're gonna get through this pretty quickly. Okay, so now it's time to choose your plan. Basic is just fine as long as you're just creating one website. If you're a, a web designer creating multiple sites for clients and you want staging servers, then go with one of these. But if you're just a business, all you need is this $2.95 a month plan. So I'm gonna click on select. Now here's where you can either use a domain you own. So if you already have a .com you wanna use, you would just type that in here and it'll walk you through the steps of transferring it. Or if you want a brand new domain, all you need to do is see if the one you want is available. So I would just type in yourmostprofitablewebsite.com and we'll see if that's available. Click on next. All right, we are in business, it's available. So all you need to do from here is input all of your billing information, choose your account uh, plan. So basically it is cheaper the longer out you go with 36 months, but you can go down to 12 months, that's fine too. Then we have all these extras. So I like to just uncheck all of them. I don't think any of them are that necessary and I'll click on turn it off. This one, domain privacy and protection, is the only one you might consider um, that's gonna keep your name off potentially being on any spam lists, but I've actually not really encountered that, so it's up to you if you wanna keep that checked or not. And then enter in your payment information and check right here, and then click on submit. Okay, so when everything goes through, all you have to do is click on create your account. You've already got your domain name here, now you're just gonna create your password, and I'm just gonna use the the one that they got for me. I'm just gonna take note of it. I'm just gonna do a copy. Then click right here to show that you've read and agreed and then create account. Now go to login and then type in your password and then log in. I'm just gonna save it. Okay, now create your website. I'm gonna choose skip this step and I'm gonna keep choosing saying skip this. 
And then I'm finally going to choose limitless customization. And they're going to ask you a few things. What type is it? Let's just say, you know, just choose the type of your business. Or, you know, we can actually just click on skip this step. I'm going to do that. Now here's where you want to put in the name of your business or the name of your website. Tagline's not that important. I'm going to skip that and click continue. We actually do not need to pick our theme here because the next step we do is going to take care of that for us. So I'm going to click on skip this step for now. They're installing WordPress. And now we're ready to actually log into WordPress where the fun can begin. So just click right over here. Okay, so we're now inside of our WordPress dashboard. Actually, if we click right here, we're actually in the dashboard uh, where you would be when you log in to WordPress each time. So a few things I wanna show you real quick before we get started. So within WordPress, the side panels where you're gonna go, this is where most of your options are. So whenever you write a blog post, for instance, you can click on posts, add new, same with pages. But the main thing I actually wanna talk about right now is users because you didn't actually choose a password for WordPress yet. So we're gonna go ahead and click on users, all users. Now, when you signed up, it did create a user account for you. So I'm just gonna click on edit and I'm gonna go down to the bottom and it allows you to put in your first name, your last name, all that stuff. The really important thing though, is that it has your email correct and that it has your password. So change it to something you'll remember and then click on update profile. Then whenever you need to log back into your account, you just go to yourwebsitename.com slash wp-admin. You're gonna put in your username and your password. So the only thing left before we can start building is we need to add the right plugin. So let's go over to plugins on the left side. And I just wanna do a little cleanup here. So I'm gonna click on dismiss. I'm gonna get rid of all of these annoying pop-ups. This is up to you if you wanna do it or not. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to choose all of these plugins and I'm gonna deactivate all of them and I'm gonna choose them again. And then I'm going to delete them and then click on apply. Now we're gonna add in the only plugin we actually need and that is called starter templates. So just type that in the search bar. And this is the one right here. It's got a, over a million installs. It's a great plugin. So I'm gonna click on install and activate. So what this is doing is it's getting us set up with the page builder we need, as well as the theme we need, which is Astra. Now just click on see library. Okay, so now we have all of these different page templates to choose from, and there are a lot of them. So let me go ahead and make this a little easier on you. So. First thing you want to do is limit it to the free ones because you'll notice there are some that say premium. So we're just going to go up to all and we're going to choose free and that'll cut, cut it down quite a bit. And from here, it's really just about finding the layout that's going to best serve your own content. So there's a lot of them that are uh, categorized based on the industry or, you know, what type of business you run. But honestly, at the end of the day, you're changing out all the content, so it doesn't matter anyway. However, I'm always going to go back to this one, this first one, Outdoor Adventure. I think it just serves as the best base that we can work with, that we can add what we need to, take out what we don't need. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this one. So you'll see it comes with all of these different pages, but of course, we're just doing a one page website. So we really only need the home page. So I'm going to just show you what we've got here. We've got all these different sections. Some will be replaced. Some will be added. It's going to look quite a bit different when we're all done with it. So, but even though we're doing a one page website, we still have to import the complete site. Um, it's just something to do with things will break if we don't. So what we're going to basically do is import all these pages. We're going to build the home page. And at the end, we're just going to delete all the other pages. That's the easiest way to do it. So I'm going to click on import complete site. And that's just going to take a few minutes to import all the pages. Oh, but first we have to answer a few questions here. I'm just going to say building for myself next and then skip. And now it's just going to take a few minutes to import everything on over, including the Astra theme, which is the one we need to, uh, to build with. Okay, so the website imported successfully, great news. Now we just click on view site. So this is what we have to start out with. It's got a uh, navigation up top that we're gonna get to later on in this video, but we've got a top section. We've got all these different sections. So let's get going on actually making this our own. So all we need to do is go up to edit with Elementor. 
And that brings us to the Elementor uh, building area. So what we've got here is on the right, we have our, what I call the stage. This is basically where we can build things uh, with a drag and drop interface. And then over on the left, this is the side panel. This is where all the widgets are. So basically what we can do is we can drag anything from over here onto the actual staging site. And then anything over here, we can edit over here. So we just click on each element and then over here is where we can edit the text, the style, all that good stuff. I'm just gonna go ahead and right click over this and delete it because we don't need that. Now, what I like to do before I actually get into editing the content is if I know there's a specific font I wanna use on the site, I like to set that up first as well as colors. And the way you do that is just go up to this hamburger icon up here, these three lines, and then go to site settings. Now, if you have any colors you know you wanna use, just click right here, and then you would add a color, and you just click on it, and you type in the code you want. But we can always do that as we go. Um, but let's go back to uh, our font. So we're not gonna do global fonts, actually. We're gonna go down to typography. And right here, we can choose the font we use for our body text, which is basically any of the, the normal paragraph text you see. I'm gonna go ahead and switch that to it's called Montserrat. I just I think that's a really clean font for body text. Now, and by the way, you get access to thousands of Google fonts here. So just do a Google search for Google fonts, find the ones you like, and you have access to all of them right here. So we're gonna do that for our body font. And for weight, I always like to keep it on default. We don't want that to all be bold. You can also change things like the size of it, the line height, which is just the spacing between lines of text. I don't like to change too much of this um, on body copy font. However, I do like to change some of this on the headings. So what we need to do is decide on a heading font. So I'm also gonna go with Montserrat here. So I'm gonna click on typography under family. I'm gonna type that in as well. And we get kind of a preview of it right here. I think that looks nice with the weight of it. And then we're gonna do the same thing for all the H's. I'm gonna down through H4. So I'm just gonna quickly go through one by one. Okay, so I've changed H1 through H4 to the font we want, and that should take care of it on all around the site, everywhere where any kind of headlines appear. So from there, we're just gonna click on update to save those changes, and now we can actually have some fun and customize this page. So I'm just gonna click on the X up here to get back to where we were. So all this is really gonna entail is going section by section and taking out things we don't need, adding new sections uh, as we need them and customizing them. So let's start with this top section, otherwise known as the hero section. So the first thing we wanna do uh, might be to change the headline. So we would just click on it, we'd go over to the left and we'd type in one page to rule them all. I've never even seen that movie, but I know the phrase anyway, so thought it was ap applicable here. So we've got the new text, but we can do other things with it as well. What if we don't want it to all be uppercase? So we can just go up to style, go down to typography, and under transform, we're gonna do, it's set on default, which is, I think is what they just default to for, uh, for headings. We're just gonna go to normal. And that takes care of that for us. Now, what if we didn't want this text up top? They love putting this little kind of description text above headlines. Uh, with this theme, and I'm not sure why. So I'm, what if we would rather use it as a subheadline? So I'm just gonna take it and drag it underneath the headline text. And then we can click on it and change it right over here. So just put in some dummy text, and we can always change the style of that. So in case we wanted it to be a little smaller, we go up to style, typography, size, we just play around with it till it looks about right. And I think that looks pretty nice. Now we're left with this weird little divider line. We don't need it. I'm just gonna choose it and just mouse over it, right click, delete. Now we've got our button to deal with. So let's click on that. And we first thing we wanna do is change what it says. You know, if we wanted it to say, you know, get started, not the strongest call to action in the world, but it'll do for now. And then we can go up to style and here's where we can change the font. If we wanted to do that, again, typography, if we want to change the font, we go to family, can change the size, all that good stuff. 
but I think it actually looks pretty good. What I wanna change is the background color. So we would just go down to where it says color, just click through, and then you can either drag, you know, wherever you want, you can find the right color, slide the color wheel, and then just choose based on that. Or if you already know what color you want, you can just paste in the hex code right there. And here is a pro tip for you. So whenever you're adding in a new color and you don't wanna to have to retype it in each time, or let's just say you found one manually that you really like, if you wanna save it for later so you can use it around the site in other places, just click this little plus icon right here. I like to give it a name. I'll just call it button green and then create. You don't have to give it a name if you don't want to, but that way it's there for us whenever we want to use it again. Okay, so, but now let's talk about the background image. We want to replace that, right? So the way we do that is we have to choose the entire section. So click these six dots up at the top, then go over to style. And this is where the background lives. So, and just so you know your options here, you can do a solid background color. If you wanted to choose something here, you can do a gradient, you can even do a video or a slideshow but let's not get ahead of ourselves. I'm just gonna replace this image for now. So I'm gonna click on choose image. And from there, you can drag your, whatever image file you have over to the window, or you've got access to thousands of free stock images from Pixabay. You just click right up here. You would do a search for whatever you're looking for. Um, it always stretches them out for me when I'm looking at them here, but don't worry, that's not how they look when you actually put them in the site. But I've already imp imported my own images I want to use, so I'm just going to go to Media Library, and I'm going to choose the one I want right here, and then just click on Insert Media. Okay, so it's looking pretty good, but there's a few things I might want to change. So what if this background's too dark for us? And what if we don't want this text to be right in the middle overlapping with our, you know, our hero right here? So obviously this is set up right now as a three-column layout out of the box. So what we can do though, let's just go ahead and right click on this column and then delete it. So now we have two columns left. Already this is looking a lot better, right? So what I wanna do now though is change this overlay. So just so you know, let me click here. So under style, we have a background image, but we also have a background overlay. That's what's giving this, it this dark color over it, which a lot of times you need uh, in order for the text to be read right. So if you didn't have it, let's just click here. You know, it'd be very hard to read this text. But what we can also do is a gradient overlay. So what if we just want a gradient? So this is dark over here, but then it's lighter over here over our main focus. All we need to do is switch over to gradient. Under background overlay, switch to gradient. And then I'm gonna choose our first color. I'm gonna make it black. And it always defaults to this pink color here, but I'm actually gonna keep the pink color active right now so we can see what we're doing. What we really want, we wanna drag these around and then we wanna drag the angle so that it's giving us the right place. So basically anything that's dark is gonna be our black overlay and anything that's white or pink over here is gonna be just totally transparent. So let's kinda of drag this around so it looks right to me, there we go. Now all we do is we're gonna click on the pink we're gonna actually choose black, but we're gonna change the transparency to clear just right down here. There we go, that's all we gotta do. And that looks pretty good to me. The only thing that's bothering me now is I want all this to be left justified. So I'm gonna go one by one, I'm gonna click on the headline, go over to content, left justified. This one right here, content, left, button, content, left. All right, and anytime we wanna take a preview of what we have, we're just gonna get rid of the sidebar. All right, and that's looking pretty good. I think we can move on to our next section. So our next section here is like a little quote. I don't think it's necessarily needed, so this is a good time to let you know if there's a section that you don't have any use for and you don't even wanna modify it, you can do better with a different section, we can just get rid of it by clicking on the X right here. So let's say we wanted to add a new section in that just has like a, a little short about us section, two columns so we can have a video and then some text. Here's what we do. We just click on the plus icon and then we're gonna find the section we need by clicking on the starter templates logo right here. And we're gonna switch from pages to blocks. 
Now this is gonna give us access to hundreds of these you know, different styled sections that we can just customize with our own content, our own styles, and it's gonna be perfect for what we need it for. So um, these are arranged into categories, or you can just kind of take a look around and see what you can find. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go under all, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna click on about, because I know we want an about section here. So something like this is exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm just gonna click right there and then import block. And then I'm just gonna get rid of this. So here's what we're left with. We have a headline, some text, and an image. So the way you would change the image is you would just click on it, then right under choose image, just drag whatever image you want into the area here, and then you would click on insert media. However, I'm actually gonna put a video here. What if you had a great video? This would be a great place to showcase it. So I'm gonna right click delete, and I'm gonna go over under our widgets, and I'm gonna find the video widget. All I need to do is drag it and drop it into place. And then the way you put your own video in here is, first of all, you would have to upload it to either YouTube or Vimeo. I don't recommend self-hosting it on your own website. It takes up way too much data and it takes too long to load that way. So you upload it to YouTube, then you get the URL, um, the link to that video, and you just pop it right in here. There you go. And then if you want this little band to go away, under player controls, you just click on hide. All right, so now let's tackle the rest of the section. So one thing at a time, we'll click on the headline. We'll retitle this to a little about us. And then we would type in whatever content we need here. Let's just say it was twice as long. And of course, if we didn't want this to be all capitalized, we would just click on it, go up to style, typography, transform, normal. Because right now it's set to uppercase. We could also make uh, make it a little less bold if we wanted to. So I think, I think it's about on 600 now. So if we made it 400, maybe 500 would look good. Yeah, I think that looks pretty nice. And then if we wanted to change the text color, we would just go up to text color, find whatever one we want, or we can type in our hex code right there. So it's just like a really dark blue. I think it looks a little nicer than the black. And then I'm just gonna click on the plus icon, remember, to save that so we can use it for later. So I'm gonna call that headline blue and then create. And before we move on, let's just talk about the background. What if, let's click on the whole section and go up to style. Now again, we can do a, a solid color, we can do a gradient, we could do a video background or a slideshow or an image. But in this case, I'm gonna go simple because we already have an image up here. Let's just go ahead and click on where it's showing white. And I'm gonna type in a hex code for a really kind of light beige color that I just think looks really nice with the rest of the look of the site. And of course, I'm gonna click on the plus icon to save our color and then create. Okay, now moving on to our next section. So this is titled Upcoming Events. This may not apply to your business, but that's okay. If you can see a use for this kind of a layout, for me, I think this looks like it could be, you know, our services or it could be your benefits, anything like that. So first of all, let's just say you had three, not two. Very easy to, to switch this up. Just right click on either one of these columns and then say duplicate. And now we've got a three column layout just like that. So let's start by switching this headline out. So we just click on it, type in our services. And let's say, here's a little trick. Let's say we wanted the style of this headline to be exactly like the style of this headline. Very easy to do. We just right click, copy. Now we go down to this headline, right click, paste style. But that took it too far because I gave it the left justification. So the way we fix that and recenter it is just under content, go to alignment, center. And then we're left with this little pink divider line. It's your choice if you could right click delete or we can customize it and make it fit our color scheme. Just click on it, go to style, and then let's choose our same dark blue that we're using for headlines. So any color that you've saved, by the way, you're gonna click on this little globe icon and that's where all of those go. So I'm just gonna type in, or I'm just gonna choose headline blue. And then we just need to add in our own content for each of these images and for each of the services. So you just click each thing one by one, change it to service one, and then you would change the text of it right here. And you would do the same thing for two and three. 
and then now the images. So we just click each one by one, then go over to choose image, and then use whatever image you want to, drag it over to your window. I've already got mine loaded up here. So I'm just gonna choose it and then insert media, and we'll do the same for service two. And one quick thing I wanna tell you about. So a lot of these themes that come with it, they're gonna have, if you can tell, there's like a weird kind of finish to this photo. They basically added some CSS to it to have, achieve a certain look. If you don't like that, all you need to do is come over to Style and then CSS Filters and then just click this Back to Default icon and it'll take away the, uh, yeah, we did it on this one. So let's just do that one by one. Then go up to Style, Back to Default, and then here. Yeah, not sure why they do it that way, but it's easily reversed. So let's say we didn't want these buttons. All we need to do is right click, delete, right click, delete, and one more time. Okay, so moving on to our next section, uh, let's say we wanted a benefit section, which I highly recommend on any website. So I've already showed you how to import a block and then customize that, but I do wanna show you one other way of creating a section in case you can't find what you're looking for. What you wanna do is it's gonna start the same way, just click the plus icon, but rather than clicking on this guy right here, we're gonna click on the plus sign. Now this lets you choose how many columns you want. We're gonna choose one column. So we just have a blank section. So what we do is we go up to the grid here so we can find our widgets. We're gonna drag everything we need into place. So we're gonna drag the heading right into that section. We're going to find a text editor for like a little sub head right there. Then here's where we get a little fancy. So we're gonna choose an intersection. So what this does is this gives us the ability to add columns within a section. So we're gonna drag that right under our text editor. And then we're gonna make this three columns instead of two. So all we need to do is right click here and then add new column. And now we want our little icon boxes to appear in here. So it's gonna have an icon with a headline and a little bit of a description. So there is actually what I call a compound widget that has all of those elements in it. So under search widget, I'm gonna type in icon and we're looking for icon box. So we're gonna take that and we're gonna drag it into our first column like so. And we'll get to the other two in a second. First of all, though, we want to style all this up so it's looking good and then we can just duplicate the same style for our you know, two and three benefits over here when we're done. So the first thing I wanna do is differentiate this section from the section above it. So I'm gonna click it with these six dots, go up to style. Now I'm gonna make this the same background color as this section. So it's just gonna go beige to white, back to beige again. So under background type, I'm gonna click on classic. That just means a solid color. I'm gonna click on our globe icon because remember we saved that color, but if you didn't save a color, you just choose a new one. Now we can better see the section that we're dealing with apart from the others. So one thing I'm noticing is there's not enough space between the text and the, the border of the section. This is a really common thing that a lot of people do and it makes your site look a lot more amateurish if you keep it this way. So I'm gonna show you how to avoid that. While we still have the whole style being selected, we go up to advanced and here's where we have our margins and our padding. So let's talk about the difference really fast. So. If we're talking about a section, the margin is the space between the outside of the section and the next section, right? If we're talking about padding, that's the space within the section. So that's what we wanna add here. So we're gonna to go to padding, we're gonna to go to top, and we're gonna type in 50. But see what happened is it gave 50 on all sides. We actually don't want it on, on the right and the left. We just want it on the top and the bottom. So I'm going to unlink those values, and then on the right, I'm gonna bump it back down to zero, and then on the left, same thing. Okay, so now let's fix our headline. So again, we're gonna to wanna to copy and paste the same style we used up here. So I'm just gonna right click, copy, and on this one, right click, paste style, and if I wanted to change the actual text, I would just do it over on the, on the left side panel. And I would do the same thing for the text underneath it and then I would go to style and then center it under alignment. Okay, so now let's talk about the actual first benefit we have listed. So let's customize the look of this so we can move on to the other two. 
And remember how I said this is a compound widget, which basically means within one single widget, it has the icon, the title, and the description all in one element together. So the first thing we wanna do, you know, we'll give it a name, we would change the description right here, and then we would wanna choose the right icon to represent it. So just click on icon library, and it gives you quite a few icons here. So they can be hard to search out, just so you know that. What I like to do is just kind of think a little metaphorically and try to find the best fit for whatever the benefit is. You know, sometimes you can get a little creative with it. I'll just choose the suitcase for this one, click on insert. And then if you wanted to change the color of it, which I recommend, you go up to style and then under icon, you're gonna change primary color to whatever you want it to be. I've already got a nice color picked out. And then under style, if you wanted to you know, change the sizing or the color of the title, anything like that, you just click on content. And then let's make, the, let's make it a little smaller. So we go to typography and then size, we just kind of play around with it till it looks how we want it. I think that looks nice at 20. Okay, so once we get it looking the way we want it to look, all we need to do is right click copy, right click paste, and then once again over here. And then we just go one by one and we change the icon and the text to suit exactly what it is we need. Okay, so far so good. I think that's looking pretty nice. Let's just take a little, kind of see what we've got so far from, from top to bottom. And now we can move on to our next section. So let's say we like the idea of having you know, a background image like this, but we actually want to use this as our testimonial section. I would actually probably just start from scratch here. I'm going to X this one out and we're gonna add a brand new section. So I'm gonna click on the plus icon and then starter templates icon. And then remember we have to go back to blocks. And now I'm gonna search under testimonials right there. And now you can find whatever layout suits you the best. There's a ton of them here to choose from, so it really can be customized any way you want it to be. I'm just gonna choose this one up top here. I think this is nice and all purpose. And then import block. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this so we're starting clean. So the first thing I wanna do, just so we can see what we're working with, is let's put in our background image. So I'm gonna click on the section as a whole, then style, but under background, we're gonna choose image right here. And remember, you just drag whatever image you want to into the window here. I'm gonna choose this one I've already got, and then insert media. Okay, so I wanna talk about a few things here. I don't know if you can really tell, but it's repeating. See this, the hand right here? It's repeating, we don't want that. So what we wanna do is go down under image, and under size, we wanna choose cover. That's gonna make the image the right size to cover the entire width of the screen. But if you do that, you wanna make sure the image is big enough to do that. Then from there, see how see the difference between this, how it scrolls with you versus up top, how the image stays static and the rest of the site scrolls around it? I think that looks better, so I'll show you how to get that. Still choosing the whole section. Under the image, we go to Attachment, Fixed. And that give, that's what gives us that effect. So just a little pro tip for you there. Now you will notice this is kind of hard to read the text on it. So what we need here is we need that overlay on top of the image that's going to help the text pop. So first of all, let's make the text white. So you go up to style, text color. We're just gonna choose a white right up here in the, the corner. That way we can see how much of an overlay we really need. So I'm gonna click on the section again. And then under background, we get background overlay. So I'm just gonna click on classic. That's gonna give us a solid color overlay. What we could do is we could choose straight up black, which is what I usually recommend actually, but I do wanna see what it's gonna look like with our really dark blue that we've picked out. So we go under our custom colors, and I'm gonna choose that under headline blue. I actually don't, it's a little too green, so let's just see what we can find that's better. So let's click on the color. I'm gonna see if it looks better, if it's, we just go a little more blue with it. Yeah, that looks better to me already. Then I'm gonna choose this headline text and we're gonna change what it says under content to what people are saying. And again, we wanna be consistent, so we wanna get rid of this uh, all uppercase. So I'm gonna go up to style, typography, weight, I think we had it on 500, and then transform normal. 
And then from here, all we need to do is, cus is actually put in the content for each individual testimonial. You click on each box, you change the text right in here like so. You change the image of the person by clicking here. You know, I'll choose this one. And then you just do the same thing for the rest of them. Oh, and one thing you can do actually is under title, this would add, this would add ex extra text right there. A lot of times people will use that to put the person's job title or the city they live in, which actually can be great for local SEO if you're trying to rank for a local city name. Like you could put in Denver if you're trying to rank for within Denver. But what I like to do normally is actually grab a web emoji of a star and just repeat that five times. So you've got a, basically a five star testimonial. So to do that, you would just do a Google search for web emojis, star, copy, and paste. And we'll go ahead and do that in the rest of these real quick. So I hope by now you're starting to see that all we're really doing is finding little section blocks that fit the content that you need to have on your one page website. So let's go down a little further. So this one has kind of a little gallery over to the side and text over here. And maybe that fits your content, maybe it doesn't. But what I wanna do is, let's just try to find a different kind of gallery just to show you what's possible. So what I'm gonna do is again, I'm going to X this out so we get rid of the section. And I'm gonna add a new one by clicking on the starter templates icon. And under blocks, let's look up, uh, let's see, I don't know, I remember if they say gallery or portfolio. Portfolio, let's try that one. So. So we've got all these different options here. So let's just find one that works uh, for our purposes. I'm just gonna go ahead and choose this one right here. Gives us a little kind of image slider, which is kind of cool. So I'm gonna click on import block. Now let's go ahead and customize. So first thing, I think we can get rid of this top little headline. It's not necessary. So we remember we just right click delete and we'll change the text over here. We already know how to do that. And I'm gonna add a little emoji in there as well. You just add that in the text editor. And we would obviously change the text by clicking on it and doing it over here. And now to style this the way we want it, let's go up and find one that's left justified. So this is a good one. We'll do right click, copy, and then right click, paste style. Now, here's something that's interesting. See how much like space is between these lines? It's a little bit much, so I wanna actually fix it. So. First thing I actually want to get, I want to put this on two lines instead of three. So I'm just going to play around with the column widths. So all we need to do is kind of drag it around and we can make the columns, we can make, you know, this column really big and the, that one really small, or we can go way the other way with it. But let's just drag it to where we have it all on two lines. Yeah, that looks pretty good, I think. But now let's address this line height issue. So we just want to click the text go up to style, and then under typography, we're gonna go down to line height. So we just wanna drag it to where it looks a little bit more reasonable. I think that looks good just like that. But now we need to pop in our own images, right? So all we need to do here is click on the gallery section, and then we're gonna click on this little trash can. It's gonna get rid of all the images in there. It's gonna ask if we wanna reset it. We're gonna say delete. Now we're gonna click on this little plus icon and just choose all the images we want to put in there. So I'm just going to choose a few that I've already got loaded up. All right, and then create a new gallery. Now from here, you can add captions to them if you want to, but I'm just going to click on insert as is. All right, and there we go. So basically it's got them in there and then it just shows, you can choose over here how many slides it's going to show at once. Um, I think if we did any more than two, it's going to be they're gonna to be too small, so I'm gonna put it back on two. I think that looks pretty good, just like that. Now, if we wanted to, let me just kind of get a real sense of what this looks like. There's kind of a lot of space between these, so let's see what we can do about that. So all we need to do is choose the entire section and go under layout and columns gap. This is where we choose that. So basically we can do a narrow gap, which I think is gonna fix that. Or let's see, if we do wide, it, it widens it up a bit. Yeah, so let's do narrow. And then, oh, here's what's going on. We've got quite a bit of spacing, quite, quite a bit of padding rather in this column itself. So I'm gonna choose the column. And remember where padding is, we go over to advanced and see right here, we've got 50 pixels of padding on the left. 
I'm gonna see what it looks like with zero. Yeah, to me that looks better already, so I'm gonna go with that. Okay, now moving on to our next section. We don't have anything here, so we need to add something from scratch, right? So what is this page missing? If it's a one-page website, which is what we're doing, we need some way for people to actually get in touch with you, right? In most cases. So we're gonna add a, um, a get in touch with a section, like a contact form. So I'm gonna click on the starter templates icon, and under blocks, I'm gonna go and look for a contact section. So there's a ton of options here as well. I think you're starting to see a theme here. There's basically something for everyone. So I'm going to choose, uh, I think I'm just gonna choose the simple one right up top here and then import block. Okay, so what we've got here is basically an empty contact form. And the reason is it hasn't chosen the contact form that's going to be in there yet. So all we need to do is click on that. And then under form, just click the drop down and just choose contact form. Now we're gonna tackle this in two sections. We're gonna basically make it look the way we want. We're gonna style it, we're gonna add the content. Then we're going to make sure that this contact form actually works and connects and sends right to your email address. So first things first, let's just go ahead and tackle the headline. We're gonna change the text to say, get in touch. And then under here, you would basically just put in your, uh, your address I'm gonna get rid of email. I'm not a fan of publishing an email address. They're gonna be able to send you an email with this form. This is gonna to lead to a lot of spam. So take my advice and just get rid of publishing your email address on your website. And then phone number, you're just gonna edit that right over here. But I wanna make sure that this text is styled right. So we're gonna click on it. Style, typography, transform, normal. Just so it matches everything else and wait I'm gonna bring it back down to 600 so it also matches what we've already got. But you know, we've got quite a bit of uh, white space up here, so let's put an image behind this one. So let's choose the entire section, go to style, and then under image, we're just gonna choose image, and I'm gonna get this one right here. Click on insert. And remember what we need to do uh, in terms of attachment, we wanna make sure that that's fixed. So we go under attachment, fixed, and then we're gonna to go to size and choose cover. So it's just gonna be big enough to cover the entire width. And since I want all this text over here to be white, we need to make it pop. So we need to add that overlay on top of the background image. So we're gonna to go to background overlay. This time I'm just gonna choose simple black. So under classic, under color, just choose black. And then we can change the opacity of this by sliding this slider. This way it's uh, completely transparent. And if you go all the way over, to one, it's completely black. So let's choose something in the middle. I feel like that's gonna look nice. And then we just have to change the color of this text and this under style and content. So this is another basically compound widget. We have a type, we have a headline and text, so we have to do it in both places. So under title, we choose white, and then under description, we do the same thing. And if we want to apply those changes to our other phone number section right here, all we need to do is right click copy, right click paste style. And that's looking pretty good, but what if we want this background to be a different color? So let's just choose the column and then go up to style and then color. Let's choose our same uh, dark headline blue that we've been using. And that looks pretty good, but what if we wanted it to be slightly see-through? Just slightly, so we would go uh, choose the color, and then here's that transparency slider. So we would just back it up ever so slightly to where you can just see a little bit underneath it. And I think that looks pretty nice. So the next thing we have to do is actually make this form, first of all, work, as well as we need to be able to change the color of this button and style it the way we want to. However, we don't actually be, we're not able to edit this form with an element or it's a bit of a workaround. So what we need to do is actually just Make sure we've updated, saved our changes by clicking this update button down here. And then we're gonna click this hamburger icon and go to exit to dashboard. Then we're gonna click on the WordPress icon. From here, we're gonna go down to WP forms and just click on that. And then we're gonna choose our contact form and click on edit. So you'll see we have your name, email address, and message. We can change these fields if we want to by clicking on it 
changing the label if you want to, or if you wanted to add fields, you just go over to click on add fields. And let's say you wanted to have some kind of a drop down where you're asking people maybe what their budget is, you could drag that over and then you would click it and you would just edit all your choices here. You would, you know, you know, budget A, budget B, budget C, something like that. You could make it required if you want to. You can do that with any of these. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that one though. Say okay. But instead of just saying message, what if I wanted that to say something more descriptive? I just need to go down to advanced options and under placeholder text, I'm gonna type in, what can we help you with? So that's how you configure uh, which form fields you actually want to use. Next, we need to go to settings because we need to make sure that this is actually going to send to your email address because otherwise, what's the point, right? So under settings, if you wanted your submit button text to say something other than send message, you would change that here. But we're going to go to notifications. This is where you actually choose what email address that the form sends to. So you would put in your email address here. Email subject, this is what's gonna come, you know, this is what the subject line is gonna show in your email. So I might go with something like new website inquiry. Now from name, this is going to be set to their name because in the first field, the one labeled zero, it was your name. And then in the second one labeled one, that was their email address. So these are what we call short codes. I wouldn't recommend changing these. I would just say from email, that's going to be yours again. And then everything else, we're just gonna leave exactly the same. So then we go up to save and close. Now we wanna go back to pages and we're gonna to go to the home page and edit with Elementor. Now remember what we need to do is change this button to be the, the color we want it to be, unless you're happy with what it already is, but chances are you want it to, you want to control that. So what we need to do is go back up to this hamburger menu under site settings, and we're going to choose buttons. Now here's where we're going to choose our color. So you would either click right here and choose whatever color you want, including whatever hex code, if you've already chosen one. But remember, we already kind of chose our button color and we saved it for us. So we're going to click on the globe icon and go down to button green. And there we go. So now this contact form should be configured for whenever anyone fills it out, it gets sent to your email address. So the main thing we need to do from here is make sure we have all of our sections up here in the header menu and set it to where whenever you click on a section, it automatically scrolls us to the right place on the page. It's actually way easier than it sounds. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. So let's go ahead and click on the X to get back to editing with Elementor. Oh. So before we X out of here, we just have to click on update to save that change. And then I'm going to click on back to editor, or you could click the X up here. All right. So remember, we have all these navigation items up here. We're actually going to get rid of those and add new ones. So in order to add links that are going to scroll to a certain part of the page, a certain section of the page, we need to name our sections in a descriptive way. So first of all, we're not gonna worry about the top section because it's already at the top of the page, but starting with this section, we're gonna name each of them. So I'm gonna click on the section and we're gonna go over to advanced and see here where it says CSS ID. All we're gonna do is we're gonna type in the name of the section. I'm just gonna type in about. The simpler you make these, the better. Then I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna choose the section, advanced CSS ID. I'm gonna call it services. Now this section I'm going to call benefits. Next, we have testimonials, followed by gallery, and finally, contact. I'm then going to click on update to save our changes. And now we have to do our work on the actual menu itself. Okay, so we're just going to make sure everything's updated, and then we're going to click on this little eyeball icon down here where it says preview changes. So this gives us a good look at uh, the front side view of it when we're not editing it. So the way we edit this, uh, this top navigation, so we're gonna do a few things. We're gonna change the button color, we're gonna change the uh, actual menu itself, and we're gonna change the logo, because obviously this is not your logo. So uh, all we need to do is go up to Customize, 
And that's going to bring us a different sidebar menu. This is not inside of Elementor now. We're actually editing the theme here. So we need to go down to Header Builder. And you'll notice with this page and a lot of the pages within Starter Templates, we're actually using this transparent header, meaning it's on a transparent background and it just allows the photo underneath to, to come through. It's a little bit more of a modern look. So we need to click on Customize Transparent Header. And first of all, I'm gonna enable this on desktop and mobile. So we'll click on that. And we're gonna uncheck using different logo for transparent header. We don't need that. So first thing we wanna do is actually upload your logo. So we're just gonna click on this little pencil icon where the logo is. And then over here, we're gonna do change logo. And ideally, you want your logo to be, you want it to stand out against the background. So that should, it should be a lighter color. And if it's not, you actually have to change the background color of the entire heading bar. So we're gonna assume you have a light color logo. I'm gonna click on change logo right there. And it's saying suggested image dimensions of 180 by 60 pixels. So I happen to have my logo right here. I'm gonna click on that and then select and then skip cropping. Okay, so it's uploaded our new logo. So now we go down here to logo width because it's a little small. We might wanna bump it up to maybe to 200 pixels. Seems about right. Next, let's talk about our button. So we're gonna click on the little pencil icon next to that. So we can change our, act, our text to the same thing as everywhere else, which is get started. We wanna make sure it's very consistent. And now here is where things get interesting. So the link, what we wanna link it to is our very bottom section, what we, did, what we called contact. So all we need to do is we're gonna keep this pound sign right there, or hashtag, and we're gonna type in contact, or whatever it is you named that contact section. Now, if we wanna change the color, all we need to do is go to design, and unfortunately, it does not save our element or color palette in here, so we have to put it in again. So I'm gonna to go to background color, and I'm just gonna paste in that same green color code so that everything matches. And then you can choose another color over here for the hover color if you wanted, but we'll just leave it as is to, to be simple. So now let's talk about our main menu. So the first thing we're gonna do before we actually get everything linked up, we're just gonna change the style so that the color's right. So just go over to, just kinda click this button over here. We're gonna click on Customize Transparent Header and then go over to Design. Now we go down to Text Link, so you'll see this magenta color's already here. We're just gonna click on that and we're going to type in our new color that we wanna use and now you'll see it's working perfectly. Okay, so now what if you wanted to give this background kind of a bit of a more of an overlay so that everything pops out a little bit more? You can absolutely do that if you want to. Just click where it says background overlay. I'm just gonna choose black. And then we choose this, uh, we slide this down to however we want it to be. You know, just making sure that the text is very readable and legible, but I'm actually gonna get rid of that, so I'm just gonna click there. I don't think it's needed in this case, but there are definitely some images that are, that are very busy where you would need something like that. So now let's talk about actually linking all of these to their proper section. So just click on the little pencil icon, and then it's gonna say, it says configure menu from here. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And so what we've got is the primary menu. So I'm gonna click on edit menu. We're actually going to get, so we're gonna go through these one by one. So I'm gonna click on home and we're actually going to remove it because it's a one page website, we don't need that. And we're actually gonna delete all of these. So I'm gonna click on about, remove, services, remove, and projects, and contact. Now we're just gonna add in our sections one at a time starting with the about section, but we're not doing it with pages because remember it's a one page site. So we're gonna go to custom links and I'm gonna replace the URL with hashtag about. And then our link text is what's actually gonna show up up top. So I'm gonna type in about us and then add that to menu. And we've actually lost our preview here, but that's okay. We're just gonna keep in adding our links starting with services and then add to menu. And then next we had benefits. And I might title this why us, add to menu, then testimonials. Add to menu, then hashtag gallery. 
And we're not gonna put contact here because remember we have that in the button already. So I'm going to click on a publish and I'm gonna give the page a refresh here so we can see what we've got. So we're not quite done yet. We now need to check what this is gonna look like on mobile view, because that's really important. So we need to go down here to the bottom where we've got all our different views. We have desktop, tablet, and mobile. So I'm gonna click on mobile, and we'll see what this is looking like. So what we need to do is we need to make this top section transparent like it is on desktop view. So we're just gonna click on customize transparent header, and then go over to design. And see, it's set to mobile. You can see because it's got the little mobile icon here. So we're just gonna choose background overlay. We're gonna choose where it says white. We're gonna click on white. We're gonna put it on black. And it's up to you if you just wanna leave it like that. It doesn't look bad. Or we can bring down the opacity to something like this. And honestly, in this case, it actually doesn't look bad with nothing. But I think I'm just gonna be safe. In most cases, you might wanna add a little bit of an overlay so let's just do something like that. I think that looks pretty good. Now we obviously want to uh, give a little love to this. We want to change the color to our green color. So we'll click on it. We'll go, and by the way, you can choose these different icons. It doesn't have to just be the one. We could choose this one if you wanted to. That's kind of cool. And then design. And then we need to change the color. The icon color refers to the white, the little white dots. So we're going to do background color. It's going to choose that and we're going to type in the hex code for our same green color, so everything matches. So let me just click on this, we see what we've got. So, okay, so this text is still pink. Let's go back to Customize Transparent Header, Design, and now that we're on Mobile View, let's go ahead under Menu Color. I'm just gonna choose that, and I'm gonna type in our same green color. Actually, I'm gonna switch these. This needs to be black, and this needs to be green. That way it's when you click on it, that is when it turns green. So to me, this looks pretty good to go. Okay, so the header is looking good on desktop and mobile now. Uh, you probably wanna do the same thing on tablet before you keep going, but we're just gonna keep moving on. Click on Publish and then X out. So let's check our work so far. Let's see if these uh, menus, menu items actually take us to where they're supposed to take us. I'm gonna click on About Us. There we go. Our services, perfect testimonials, awesome. And then finally get started. That's supposed to take us to our contact form. Great. Um, so we also need to add that link on this button too. So let's click on edit with Elementor. We've just got a few more things to do. We definitely need to change that button. And then we need to make sure that everything looks great on our mobile view as well. So first things first, click on the button. Link, we're gonna do hashtag contact. Now let's take a look at what this all looks like on mobile. So we go down here to the bottom under responsive mode, click that. Now this is gonna show us what it looks like on our mobile phones as well as if you clicked up here on tablet. So let's just go to mobile. So I think almost all of this looks pretty good. The way you would make any changes if you need to is you would just make sure you're in this, this mode and you would just choose any area that's giving you trouble. Like let's say we wanted to make this text a little smaller for, for instance. We would choose that, we'd go to style and typography, and then see we are showing this mobile phone icon, meaning if we any changes we make to the size, it's only gonna be reflected in the mobile version, not the desktop version. But then there are certain things that you can't change independently, like weight, for instance. You'll see there's no mobile phone icon next to it, meaning if you change this to uh, normal as opposed to bold, it's gonna make that change across the board. I'm just gonna do an undo down here under history. I'm just gonna go back one. And if you wanted to make this text larger, for instance, you would choose it, style, typography, size, then just bump that up. And then you just go down the page and you would make any little tweaks you need to just like that. Okay, so now I'm going to go and click on update to save all of our changes. And now we're just gonna exit back out into WordPress because we have one more important thing to do, exit to dashboard, then click on the WordPress icon. Now remember how we imported that entire site, including all these different pages. We don't need them because it's a one page website. So we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna trash each one that we do not need. 
until we're left with only the home page. Now, there are a ton of really powerful next steps you could build into your new site, and I put together a really handy playlist showing you all your options. So just click right here for that playlist, and then just choose whatever piece you wanna focus on next, whether that's driving traffic to your new site or adding a live chat feature, and lots more I've got you covered. So just click right here and I'll see you in a second.